Whether you're pre-trib or pre-RAF, it's important to dispose of the pretense that expensive insurance is something that you're stuck with. Most people don't shop around for better insurance rates until years after they get their policies. And with the price of a loaf of bread slowly approaching a day's wages, it's important to save where you can. That's why the Better Insurance Agency is here to help with options for home, auto, life, and small business insurance. Visit us online at www.thebetterquote.com or call us at 540-200-8646 today to see about switching to a better insurance company. Currently available only in Virginia and Tennessee. Please note that if you're listening to this commercial after the rapture has taken place, the Better Insurance Agency is probably closed. This is Derek Gilbert, and you're listening to The Dig Bible Podcast. We should read our Bible as men digging for buried treasure. The Bible is the world's most popular enigma. Its secrets lost to cultures beneath the sands of time. Or is it? It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. God wants you to seek, to read his word, to to look for that knowledge. He wants you to do that. And the people at Nicaea, they like chopped out 80 books of the Bible. We need to bring those back. There's more bad guys in this thing than a Bruce Willis. Oh, yeah. Let's back it up here. I, I love the intro to your show because it's exactly right. There's the nuggets of gold in his word. You guys always sign the show. You, you gotta dig it. Dig it. Show us your nuggets. God, our creator, lies outside of time and space and matter. I, know, I feel like God's be like, hello, McFly. You ain't got it so far, then. There are secret societies think that they are the descendants of the giant. I mean, isn't it, is it this exciting? I mean, you read it, it's like, wow. The Nephilology round table. But these angels were taken to help immediately. Do not pass gold, do not collect $200. You're out of the game. Dirty hands means clean theology. Can you dig it? What's going on, all my local guys and gals and long distance pals? Uh, we're back with another episode of the Dig Bible Podcast. We got a really exciting guest for you today. Uh, this is a man that honestly needs no introduction, but just in case you've been living under a rock for the past eight to ten years, this is a pastor of Global Vision Bible Church. This is a man that's been no stranger to hate. He's made international news boldly standing on the Word of God against transgender bathrooms, the shutting down of churches during COVID and election fraud of 2020. This man is unapologetically unafraid. This is Pastor Greg Locke. Greg, how you doing? Thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, my friend. I actually saw your live stream the other day where you was talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Right. That was very insightful. Growing up, I was, you know, heard everything from uh, taking the Lord's name in vain or being called to come to the altar and denying it so many times that things like that was blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But once you get into the text there, you know, Matthew chapter 12 and Mark chapter three, it's, it's pretty plain. It tells us even why he said what he said. Oh yeah. And I love how you give the examples in in both of those and and said the context is key. You know, I love that. You made it real plain. I loved it. You've recently transitioned into deliverance ministry. Would you like to go into how you got into that? Or how yeah. God called you to that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, some people hear the, the phrase deliverance ministry. I jokingly tell people I, I thought deliverance was a 1970s Burt Reynolds movie, right? When you look at the Bible, it's just casting out evil spirits, right? It's casting out demons, casting out devils. And it is a third of what Jesus did. And so outside of preaching the gospel, we're talking about the number one thing Jesus emphasized. And it is the 
the last thing, if any time, to be emphasized in the modern day church because it's a very uncomfortable subject to broach and to introduce to people. But what I found is God had been preparing the hearts of our people really long before he had prepared me and my wife's heart. And so I was nervous the first Wednesday night, you know, a little over a year ago when I got up and I'm like, okay, I'm going to preach the most controversial subject in the whole Bible. Nobody wants to talk about demons and how to get them out through the power of the name of Jesus, but I'm going to give it a run. And when I announced it, it, it was powerful, my friend, because it, it was like the place erupted, right? It was almost like they were saying, wow, we've been waiting on this for such a long, long time because I was a strict cessationist. I didn't believe in any gifts. I didn't believe in any miracles, any healings, any deliverance, signs, wonders. I didn't believe in any of that. And I've always, you know, if I could use the term, prided myself on, on digging in the Bible and getting into the Word of God. I'm an expositional preacher, line by line, word by word, much like what you were saying, you know, with, with the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. The Bible's very, very plain. So the more I got in the Word and I took off the denominational lens from a seminary on how I was raised and the traditions of being, what I found was I, I cannot in any way go against the ministry of Jesus. And the ministry of Jesus was allowing people to get freedom, hope, and help through the influence of tormenting spirits. And then Paul did it, Peter did it, Philip did it, Stephen did it, all throughout the book of Acts. If you take just Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, there's 286 verses where Jesus talked about or combated evil spirits. So you can't take it away. And so you remember years ago that, you know, the book came out and the bracelets and the necklaces and the hats and what would Jesus do? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what Jesus would do. Read a Bible and see what Jesus did. And what Jesus did was cast out evil spirits. And so then all of a sudden when somebody with a, a very controversial public platform like myself, when I get up and I'm like, hey, we're going to transition into deliverance ministry and we're going to believe what the Bible says. The church has a meltdown. The denominational hierarchies have a meltdown. Like, oh, this guy's a heretic. Well, guess what? The religious people said the same thing about Jesus. What new doctrine is this? It's no new doctrine. It is the ancient ministry of Jesus, and the church has to understand that if we are not willing to obey that and see people set free, we're going to have the same boring church services where we promise people you can have peace, you can have joy, you can have rivers of living water, and we preach these cute sermons, and then half the congregation goes home. They're their marriage is falling apart, their kids are buck wild, they're having nightmares, and they're addicted to pornography. So where's all the peace? Where's all the joy? And people are afflicted by spirits of heaviness, spirits of fear, spirits of lying, all different types of attacks from the enemy, and the Bible is plain. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, which means there has to be a place for him to flee from, right? And so the devil has taken occupancy in so many people's flesh, and in their mind, and I'm telling you, there is power in the name of Jesus to overcome evil spirits. Amen. And that's one thing we talk about on our show is the church nowadays has a very truncated view of the supernatural. You know, yes. we believe in the Immaculate Conception. We believe in the miracles that Jesus done. You know, all these things, but it's just like the book stops at Jesus. And it's like everything yeah. stopped after Jesus left. No, I mean, that's what he told his apostles to do. You know, that's a major point of the gospel. But it seems like where it's, uh, you get into demons and yeah. those other things, it, it's, it's too uncomfortable or controversial and people don't want to you know talk about it you know uh, Mike Kaiser you know I love that man he was a, a big influence on me he passed away last night with his battle with pancreatic cancer but uh, he talked about even when he would go to churches when they'd get to these weird parts he's even yeah. had pastors say uh, this is too weird I'm gonna skip that no yeah. there's people that you're depriving the Word of God and they're suffering for it. You know, it says, my people suffer for a lack of knowledge, so I commend you for stepping out and not, once again, you know, being unafraid. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, it, it really is, it's a willful ignorance of the Bible because they know what the Bible says, but they want to dance around the book very much. You know, it's like, you know, these signs shall follow them that believe. And then there's five major signs, the last of which is, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, everybody loves to talk about that, at least in the more Pentecostal, charismatic, Church of God realm, right? They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's the last sign. The first sign is, in my name, they shall cast out devils. So why skip that one and go all the way to the bottom, right? And then my Baptist friends that don't believe in either of those, they believe the next verse that says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Let's do that, but let's not have the signs that follow the power and the impact of the gospel of the kingdom. So it, it's ridiculous to me that for so long... 
I was afraid of what the text said, not because it said it, but because I knew what people would say if I correctly preached it and interpreted it. Because here's the two things people need to know. There are two things true about deliverance ministry today, just like it was 2,000 years ago in the day of Jesus. Demons still respond the same way today that they did when Jesus cast them out. And religious people still respond the same way when demons come out as they did 2,000 years ago when Jesus did it. Still respond the same way when demons come out as they did 2,000 years ago when Jesus did it. My name's Nick. I'm the owner of Kevlar Joe's and I'm the roaster. I'm an Air Force Security Forces veteran, a dad to three wild boys, and a husband to my wife, Crystal, and a coffee enthusiast. From a family in a small town in Missouri, we started with the simple idea of crafting a perfectly bold cup of coffee. Inspired by wellness and countless pots of stale coffee while deployed, we wanted to craft a bold, clean, and smooth coffee. So we did. And we realized we wanted to share this coffee with our friends. Lord knows we could all use a good cup of coffee right about now. From the farm to your coffee cup, there's nothing like a good, well-crafted, and bold cup of coffee. No matter what time of the day, it's there to pick you up, motivate you, and relax you. We hope you enjoy our coffee. Be bold, be humble, be Kevlar. And you can find Kevlar Joe's Coffee Company anytime you want at www.kevlarjoe.com. And for listeners of the Dig Bible Podcast, use the code, all caps, DIG20, whenever you're checking out to get a 20% off discount. Enjoy. you got a new project you're working on. You guys are working on a movie called Come Out in the Name of Jesus. You want to tell us about that, how that came about, and maybe a little teaser storyline for the viewers? Yeah, absolutely. And if they want to find out where it's going to be playing, it releases on March the 13th. That's the theatrical and a worldwide release. Uh, they can go to comeoutinjesusname.com, comeoutinjesusname.com. They can put in their zip code, their town, city, whatever, and it'll pop up. And it's, it's playing in a lot of places, so chances are it's very, very close to where people are at. And it's literally selling out theaters all over America, which tells me, People want to know about the supernatural. They yes. want angels and demons, the kingdom of righteousness, the kingdom of darkness, because it's what we don't talk about in church, right? We talk about all the cute stuff. And yeah, of course, we talk about Jesus. But like you said, we can believe he turns water to wine. We can believe he resurrects himself from the dead. We can believe that Moses parted the waters of the Red Sea and walked through old dry ground. We can believe all of that. But for some reason, there's power in the name of Jesus until it comes to demonic entities. They don't want to talk about it. And so we decided that we wanted to take our pulpit and accentuate the voice of deliverance and say, let's go from the church to the movie theater. And I never could have imagined, it's a miracle in and of itself, that any secular organization would even allow us to do that. But they loved the idea. They were like fighting over the idea. They're like, oh yeah, people are going to go for this. They had no idea how much people were actually going to go for it. And so I'm convinced that when people see this movie, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to prove to them that the ministry of Jesus was then and now delivering people from evil spirits. And it's also going to take the hokiness out of it. Look, I know there's some fakes out there, but the problem is so many people are like, well, you know, that ministry gifts and signs and wonders and tongues and deliverance, it's been abused. Therefore, we don't believe in it. Well, the gospel has been abused, too. There's a prosperity gospel, which is anti to the gospel. But just because people preach a false gospel doesn't mean the power of the real gospel is not something viable that we should still preach. So the fact that people have abused it does not make it, you know, less than what it really is. People abuse a lot of things. People ask me all the time, well, how come if you believe in deliverance ministry, uh, then how come every single person you, you pray for for healing doesn't get healed? The same reason every person you preach the gospel to doesn't get saved. Man has a choice. Man has a free will. You have to operate in the context of your faith. And so we wanted to put out a movie that, if you will, dumbed down, right? Deliverance for dummies. It dumbed down deliverance ministry to let people see here's the biblical reality of it. Take away all the pizzazz, all the extras, all the CGI nonsense. Take all that away and let people know. The reason you are going through what you're going through is because it's a demonic attack. Your kids are having 
because there's a curse over your house, right? Your marriage is falling apart. You're addicted to pornography or drugs or prescription pills or alcohol because you have a spirit of pharmacia. You have illogical fears because the Bible says God's not giving you the spirit of fear. Fear is a person. Fear is a spirit. Uh, you're medicated for PTSD, oppression, anxiety, and depression, but the Bible calls it a spirit of heaviness, right? There's a lot in the Bible that remedies all the problems that we are going through. So we wanted to put out a movie that would preach the message of Jesus to the masses. So that's kind of a long way around the barn, but that's what we've been working on. Yeah, like you said, you know, the harvest is ripe. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why um, shows like Ancient Aliens, yeah. Ghost Hunters, yeah. all these things are doing so well right now because th the people are hungry for the supernatural. Yeah. You know, it's almost it, the big thing years ago was being an atheist. Now yeah. being an atheist is not cool. Now <laughs> yeah. being spiritually minded is cool. And everybody's, you know, just shoving down their throat. God's not real. So, of course, especially young, the young generation, they're going to rebel. So yeah. now they're going to spiritualism and yep. uh, ancient aliens and, and the supernatural type stuff. And yep. we are not prepared to talk about these things that are in our Bible. They're going to turn the wrong direction. So, you know, I think, that, honestly, this is one of those instances where the, the field yes. is ripe. We have to be ready for the harvest. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're talking about what the church won't talk about. Yeah. You know, History Channel talking about ancient aliens. Oh, this is a bunch of demon manifestations. And people are like, oh, aliens, aliens, ghost hunters, ghost hunters. Yeah, there are ghosts. Why? Because they're demons, right? They're familiar spirits that remain in houses because you can cast a demon out of a house or off a property or out of a building or an office complex just as successfully as you can out of somebody's body, right? There are real demons that are out there. And like you said, the world is speaking their language, but the church is denying it. We're doing it in a back room. We don't want to talk about it. Jesus was never embarrassed by a demonic manifestation. It would happen in a synagogue. Every synagogue in Galilee, the Bible says he cast out demons. And he wouldn't be like, okay, turn the live stream off. You know, we don't want to talk about this on the podcast. Let's, let's go in the choir room and do this at 2 o'clock in the morning with nobody around but the deacons. No, he used it as an opportunity and a springboard right there in public to say, look, this is the kingdom of darkness. I am the kingdom of righteousness. Come out in the name of Jesus and boom. People would see it happen before their very eyes. Preachers don't understand the reality that if they're praying for a crowd, if they want their church to grow, do the ministry of Jesus. And when people find out that people are being healed, set free, delivered, turned around, saved, baptized, they will come by the hundreds. They will come by the thousands. You will never want for a crowd if you will preach to broken people. If you will fill your church with broken people, you will always have a crowd to preach to because everybody's broken. And so much of brokenness is demonic affliction, and we're trying to ignore it, paint ourselves in a corner and not talk about it. And people are like, I want you to talk about it. Please, where has this been my whole life? So new age is on the rise, but I hope this movie will allow new life to be on the rise. And, and that's the thing, too, is because even church-going people – that have never been told this, you know what I mean? They don't actually open their Bible and read. They just go to on Sunday and get spoon-fed what their pastor tells them. They don't even yeah. know about this stuff. So when they do hear about this from the outside world, immediately they're like, have I been lied to this whole time? Have I been, have I been deceived? And they yeah. go start seeking this knowledge and information from other people, and then Lord knows you get on TikTok and YouTube what kind of heresies you're going to find. You know, that's why... I think God really did. He groomed you specifically for this because you are unafraid. And that's why a yep. lot of pastors don't do it and talk about it because they're afraid. They're afraid that yep. they're going to be called crazy or they don't want their name in the paper or, or, or on CNN. And yep. you are, you're just unafraid. And I, th yep. I thank you for that. All of it as a platform. Even, even the bad publicity is still publicity for Jesus, right? Amen. So my whole, my whole shtick is this. Extra, extra, read all about it. Look what Jesus did, right? So I don't care if it's CNN. I don't care if it's Fox News. I don't care if it's some podcast in Timbuktu, Thailand. We're getting the message out. And the message is there is power in the name of Jesus. And what's interesting is this. The church, like maybe 30 years ago when it came to the supernatural, the church went silent and Disney got loud. And Disney repackaged all of their witchcraft in the form of children's entertainment and so kids have been raised around the power of witchcraft and not raised around the power of the Holy Spirit. 
So now the church has so denied the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's what happens. Evil spirits are more comfortable in our churches than the Holy Spirit is comfortable in our churches. The Holy Spirit's nowhere to be found. But evil spirits are everywhere, and they never manifest themselves because preachers have no authority to make a manifest. When Jesus walked in a synagogue, then demons just came out. Why? Because authority walked in the room. I'm nothing special. But when you walk in the authority of the Word of God and the power of the name of Jesus, you walk into a room, it's a game changer, right? Mm -hmm. I get manifested at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I can go to the Waffle House and people get mad. Why? Because when you walk in your God-given anointed authority, the devil hates that. The devil hates that. And he would have to say, the devil would have to say to a lot of preachers, I don't care how big their shows are, I don't care how big their Facebook pages are, the devil would say to many of them, like the demon did to the seven sons of Sceva, Paul I know, and Jesus I know, but I ain't got no idea who you are, buddy. Who are you? I have no idea who you are. And so my whole goal in life is to make hell nervous every day I get up and my bare feet hit the floor. I want the devil to say, oh, good grief, Greg Locke's awake. We got to do something to stop him. Amen. Uh, well, do you care to uh, share like a few stories with us, like some people that you've dealt with and, and some of the, the things that you've dealt with? I think that stuff's just interesting. Oh, yeah, it, it's, it's super interesting. It's one of the reasons I want people to see the movie. It, it's not full from start to finish of all the deliverance testimonies. It really builds the importance of deliverance. But, uh, you know, a lot of people like stories. I actually will be telling some tonight, have some deliverance training. But we literally deal with this every day. There was a time that I thought, well, you know, maybe once a month. Oh, no, no, not once a month, not once a week, every day, multiple times a day. People are coming to our church. They're sleeping in the parking lot waiting for somebody to get there to do deliverance. We started, it was like me and my wife. Now we have like 85 deliverance workers. I literally could have a full-time staff of 20 people that could stay full-time every single day doing nothing but deliverance. And so we see very, very tame deliverance times of prayer, and we see very hostile times of deliverance and prayer. The longest one to date was like 18 and a half hours, the same young lady. And I mean, Everything you can imagine, except her head spinning around, <laughs> happened. I mean, she was throwing stuff, screaming, wretching, throwing up, you know, writhing around on the floor, lifting up couches, five or six different voices coming out of her. And so we've seen the fantastical, and then we've seen people just sob and weep and just, just uncontrollably, all that trauma just coming up and out of them. Sometimes it's as simple as just breaking generational curses off people. Curses because maybe their great-grandfather was in the Masonic Lodge, and he took that secret society oath, and that secret society curse follows the bloodline of a familiar spirit generation after generation. Yeah, third and fourth generation, it says it can go. Absolutely. He, he says, I'll visit the iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation if there's idolatry, witchcraft, the occult, Satanism. And so people need to quit messing around and, and open up these doors to the occult. And so we, we've seen, like I said, writhing around. Just, just the other night, there's a big old boy. He must have been 285 pounds. And we got these little 18-inch chairs in our tent at church. This guy slithered up under 20 of them like a snake trying to get away from us talking to him in the name of Jesus. And people are like, oh, that stuff's not real. You come to our church, you'll find out in five seconds it's real. I mean, it is so real. Eyes rolling back in her head, throwing up, screaming. You know, we, we hear that and we're like, oh, that's that's out of order. No, the Bible says five times they came out with a loud voice. Demons are mad. They are ticked off when they come out because they know their days are numbered. So if Jesus let it happen in public, why are we so ashamed of it? It was the ministry of Jesus. But we're not ashamed to preach the gospel, so why be ashamed for the works that follow the preaching of the gospel? Here's what Paul said. I came not to you with excellency of speech, but in demonstration and in power of the Spirit. What demonstrates the power of the kingdom of God more than watching somebody get free from a demonic spirit? Nothing. Yeah. Jesus has cast out demons by the finger of God. Then you know the kingdom of God has come unto you. So the question is, the only time Jesus said the kingdom of God has come unto you was in reference to what? Deliverance ministry. How do we know the kingdom of God has come? When you see the kingdom of God triumphing over the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it's just, uh, it just blows my mind, you know, how, like you talked about Hollywood, you yeah. know, and it's like, even with the, uh, the Marvel movies now. Oh, yes. You know, all that is, that, that's Genesis 6, fallen angels, sons, yeah. Nephilim, the demigods, you know, and, and they've just spun it and put their, their spin on it and made them the heroes. There's so yeah. many things in our culture that just glorify 
these things, and basically they just it desensitized the, the the community. And like you said, there's more demonic presence in a church pew than there is the Holy Spirit now. Yeah, and the real problem is because we have had that shift in the church, there are Christians to this day that will defend Twilight, Harry Potter, and Beyonce before they would ever defend the Bible or the fundamentals of the faith. They, they would defend worldly witchcraft before they would ever defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are people that call themselves born-again Christians that would die for witchcraft that won't even live for Jesus. And it's a shame. And even like the... And I hate to get political, but it's like it was probably a couple of years ago. I seen a bumper sticker on somebody, and this is down here in East Tennessee, yep. and it said, "I am a Christian, I am a gun owner, and I am a Democrat." <laughs> and I was yeah. like, "Is that if that's not the most biggest oxymoron bumper sticker I've ever seen in my life?" Yeah, you know, it's it like does. Microsoft works, and it never does, right? It's a big oxymoron. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day. It, it, it's ridiculous because people's morals and values don't line up with the Bible. It lines up with the culture. And so we have cultural Christians, not Jesus Christians, right? We have a bunch of Christians that have been raised by the culture when we should have had a bunch of Christians raised by the local church, which is the pillar and ground of the truth. And people are ignorant of the Bible and they will defend everything but the Bible. So when people like you and I are demonstrative and we get up on our platforms and say, oh, no, this is the word of God. People are like, kill the ogre, kill the ogre, you know, because they're defending the wickedness because the wickedness is what raised their children. It's what they're comfortable with and nobody wants to change. You know what I mean? They, they want their cake and eat it, too. Exactly right. If preachers don't get back to preaching holiness, the fear of the Lord and repentance, we're done. We're done. Look, Jesus is tired of the lukewarm church. Matter of fact, he's so tired of it, he said, I'm going to throw it up. Look, if Jesus says you make him sick, you better pay attention. So I tell people all the time, why would you go to a lukewarm church when Jesus don't even show up? Right? If Jesus won't even go to a lukewarm church, why would you raise your kids in one? And so we got to get away from this entertainment-driven society. I am not called to entertain the goats and slop the hogs. I am called to feed the sheep of Christ. And the only way we can do that is to tell the truth. And preachers just aren't telling the truth. And I say shame on them. So they can laugh at me. They can shame me about deliverance ministry. But here's what I know. We've got power and authority over unclean spirits. And if we do not use that power and authority to set people free, number one, we're disobedient. Number two, we're going to stand before God for that at the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And everybody wants to see Jesus as the loving, all-accepting life coach. You know, that same Jesus flipped over tables in the temple and, and slapped people out with, with, with whips. Yeah. And he's also depicted as the good shepherd. Well, they missed the important part of that whole thing is the shepherd had a staff, yeah. but he also had a rod to beat yeah. off the He'll wolves. With it. <laughs> Amen. He will eat with it, too. You know, I hear people say all the time, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying, but God never whips me. I said, that's because God don't whip the devil's children. If you're saved, he'll whip you. He'll wear you out. And so he may be a good shepherd, but good shepherds will sometimes have to whip the sheep a little bit, right? If I'm going to be a good pastor, I don't get to be a life coach. I don't get to get up and sell cars and insurance and popsicles at church. I got to get up and preach on repentance. I got to let people know, you better prepare. You better get some oil in your lamp because Jesus is coming again. Amen. He's coming. That's right. We got to get ready. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I know you got short on time today. I really appreciate you coming and talking to us. And uh, give everybody a plug uh, to know uh, like websites, books, whatever, you, where they can find you and your stuff. Yep, absolutely. Again, if they can just go to comeoutinjesusname.com, they can find out where the movie is going to be played uh, in their area. It releases on March the 13th. If they want to know more about the church, to visit the church, to come to a deliverance service or watch the live stream, they can go to Global Vision BC, like Bible Church, globalvisionbc.com. And then, of course, all of our social media stuff, just Pastor Greg Locke, type that in, and, and it'll pop up. And don't believe everything you read on Google. <laughs> we thank you for listening to the Dig Bible Podcast. Questions, comments, or future episode ideas, we'd love to hear from you at the dig 423 at gmail.com. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to share, subscribe, and check out our Facebook group at the Dig Podcast. Remember, you can't lean on a shovel and pray for a hole. you got to dig.